brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFB LP 101.9. Well, thank you, Council President Weld and members of the City Council. Appreciate your time this evening. I will try to, uh, since it is the hour is getting late, I'll try to make this fairly brief. I know you've all had the opportunity to review this uh, uh, this presentation as well as the CIP uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, this evening, uh, Kathy, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, this evening, just want to go over a. Uh, a few um, uh, different points. Uh, talk about the operating budget versus the CIP or the Capital Improvements Plan. I want to talk a little bit about our fiscal strategy. Um, uh, talk about, uh, just remind the City Council about uh, the Council's strategic goals and objectives. Uh, talk a little bit about our financial policies and how that relates to the CIP. Then talk a little bit about beyond the CIP, and, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, this is a five-year CIP, but uh, it became apparent during the planning process that uh, five years was not going to be sufficient a sufficient time frame, and uh, we, um, you know, just at a real cursory level looked out the next five years uh, because there are some major projects uh, on the horizon. And then we can talk a little bit about next steps. Uh, this is an unusual process with, uh, with, with COVID and with the uh, uh, city manager's impending uh, retirement. And, uh, and uh, so we'll talk a little bit, bit about what we want the next steps to be. Uh, go ahead, Kathy. Um, you know, in terms of uh, operating budget uh, versus the CIP, um, the operating budget funds the ongoing operations of the city. Uh, these are the programs and services that we deliver to the community really on a daily basis. Um, and we'll talk about this a lot more during the budget process, but as many of you know, uh, our operating budget is subject to what we call levy limits, which do, does restrict uh, the amount that uh, we, can, uh, we can spend. Uh, the capital improvement plan, on the other hand, it really funds the, um, the, the capital improvements of the community, the infrastructure, the buildings, um, uh, parking structures, those types of uh, major projects. And uh, within the, the five-year CIP, we're, we're looking at uh, next year's capital budget or the capital budget for 2021, and also a capital plan for the next four years. Um, the CIP is funded primarily from what we refer, refer to as fund balance, which is really like uh, the savings account um, uh, of the community. Those are where um, uh, it, when we don't uh, expend all the operating budget or our operating revenues exceed expenditures, um, those funds go into what we call fund balance. And those funds can be used to fund uh, future uh, one-time capital projects. Uh, we also issue debt annually. So we borrow money on an annual basis in order to fund many of the uh, projects uh, within the capital improvement plan. And just a reminder, and again, when we talk about the operating budget, we'll talk more about this, but debt service uh, is exempt uh, from the levy limits, which is why sometimes we can fund uh, capital projects uh, and increase the spending on the capital budget, but we aren't able to often do so, uh, at least to the same level uh, with the operating budget. Uh, next slide, Kathy. Uh, in terms of the capital improvement plan, uh, the CIP uh, funds are used to buy, maintain, or improve fixed assets, such as buildings, vehicles, equipment, or land. It's considered a capital expenditure when the asset is newly purchased or when money is used toward extending the useful life of an existing asset by at least one year, such as repairing the roof on a municipal facility or doing an extensive remodeling, just as we did with, the, uh, uh, with City Hall. Uh, in order to be included uh, as a capital project, the cost must exceed $5,000. And costs are usually one time in nature. Um, and uh, we will talk more about that uh, both in the capital pro program, but also when we get to the operating budget uh, and uh, whether costs are ongoing or, or one time uh, in nature. Next slide, Kathy. 
Um, the CIP allows us to anticipate and plan for future capital needs. Um, you know, it's, it's very important for us to do that so that we can uh, anticipate uh, what future needs are going to be so we can uh, either adjust um, our, our borrowing to accommodate those future expenditures or perhaps we want to make some adjustments uh, to allow those expenditures to, uh, to be made. Um, new projects should be added in what we call the out years of the CIP. We don't like to um, take a brand new project that hasn't been in a CIP before and plunk it into the first year of the CIP. It does happen um, and because priorities do change, projects do come up that weren't anticipated, but we really like to uh, add those new projects uh, in the latter years of the CIP uh, rather than moving them right to the front of the line. We also oftentimes talk, times talk about projects in the CIP as new projects versus maintenance projects. So uh, new projects are, are, are new facilities, something that we, uh, we may not have had before, versus maintenance projects, which are maintaining existing assets. Most of the projects in our CIP fall into that maintenance category. We're maintaining city facilities, fixing those existing facilities up. We're maintaining roads. We're maintaining our uh, storm sewer system or our sanitary sewer system. So most of the projects within our CIP fall into that maintenance category. And also within our fiscal strategy, we need to comply with state and council debt and fund balance policies. And we'll go through those in a little bit of detail and how this current CIP um, affects those a little uh, later in this discussion. So just real briefly, I'm not gonna go through and read uh, these, next, uh, these next slides. Uh, next slide, Kathy. Um, but these are the council strategic goals and they can be found on our website. Uh, they can be found uh, within the CIP and many other places. But uh, go ahead and jump ahead to, uh, two slides, uh, Kathy. Uh, excuse me, yeah, that slide. So how we use these goals is that these goals um, in, give staff direction or guidance in submitting projects for inclusion in the CIP. So when we know that, for example, that it's a goal of the city council uh, to, um, uh, to encourage and facilitate uh, affordable housing, we know that we should start planning for the inclusion of those projects within the, within the CIP. We saw that happen last year uh, where uh, that was a priority of the city council and we saw uh, funding for affordable housing make its way uh, into, the, uh, into the CIP. Similarly with, uh, with our uh, sustainability goals and carbon neutrality, those projects made their way into the CIP. So again, uh, the City Council's strategic goals provide staff direction on projects um, that we should consider including uh, in the CIP. Now, that, that doesn't mean that, that the inclusion of those projects are the exclusion of other um, maintenance type projects that we need to, we need to uh, continue with, such as our street maintenance program, which um, you know, that, that annual street program uh, takes up somewhere between six and seven million dollars uh, of our CIP and is, is, the, uh, is the largest um, single program uh, within, that, within that plan. You wanna go ahead to the next slide, Kathy? So just as a high level overview about how uh, this uh, uh, CIP is being funded, at least the general fund uh, projects within the plan, um, this plan uses um, about $3.05 million in fund balance uh, for the projects uh, anticipated for 2021. Um, so that is about average uh, in terms of the fund balance that, that uh, we've applied, and that is consistent with the City Council's policies on fund balance, which do allow um, fund balance to be used for one-time capital expenditures. The 2021 plan in the CIP requires approximately nine and a half million dollars in new borrowing and will increase our debt service by about $331,000 or 3.7% 3 
in 2022. So as, as I mentioned, these are 2021 projects that we're talking about. We would borrow that money in 2021, and which means our first payment on that uh, debt would not occur until 2022. So that's why that impact uh, is in 2022. It would cost the owner of a $174,000 house about $11 per year uh, in uh, uh, increased uh, property taxes. Next slide, Kathy. So one of the city council's financial policies is has to do with unassigned fund balance. And again, that is you know, basically the funds that are in our savings account or our rainy day fund, however you like to refer to that, um, and that aren't committed to some other purpose. And the council's policy says that any unassigned fund balance in excess of 15% of the next year's general fund expenditures um, can be used for uh, to fund capital expenditures. Um, the goal uh, within the council's policy is to be at 20% uh, of the uh, subsequent year's expenditures. So the graph on this screen, uh, the, uh, the, the box or the rectangle uh, that's kind of orangish in color represents the range of 15 to 20%. And as you can see, um, over the course of uh, the last uh, 10 years, our uh, fund balance has consistently uh, been greater than um, the 20% uh, um, goal set in council policy. And that when we get out to years 2024 and 25, the later latter years of this CIP, uh, even with the dollars that are being invested um, in capital projects, uh, we remain at about 19% of uh, the subsequent year's expenditures. So this CIP does comply uh, with the uh, city's council's fund balance policy and, and, and keeps us uh, in that 15 to 20% range um, as uh, required uh, by that financial policy. Next slide, Kathy. One of the council's other goals uh, has to do with total indebt indebtedness. And the policy indicates that total indebtedness shall not exceed 5% of equalized valuation, which is the state requirement, but the city council's policy is either more, more restrictive than that and it indicates that it shall not exceed 3.5% of equalized valuation. So on this slide, uh, the top kind of goldish um, line represents 5% of our equalized value or the, um, the upper limit uh, imposed by state statute. The orange line represents 3.5% of our equalized valuation, which is the upper limit of the city council policy. And then the blue bars represent um, what our indebted indebtedness would be um, uh, for the last five years, but also throughout the five years of the, CI, of the CIP. So as indicated by this graph, we would continue to comply both with the state and council policies in terms of our total indebtedness. Next slide, Kathy. Uh, one of uh, third financial policy of the city council is that our net direct debt should be less than or equal to three times the operating revenue of the city. Now, on this particular measure, we are starting to get fairly close to that upper limit um, in the latter years of this, uh, of this plan. Um, so we can see that the gold bar, or gold line, excuse me, represents um, three times the operating revenue of the city. And when we get out to 2023 and 2024, um, our uh, net direct debt is approaching uh, that line, but it does not go over, and we see that it drops back down in 2025. So this is, you know, again, this is part of the reason that we do financial planning, is so we can take a look at uh, these different operating or financial indicators, and if we see an area that needs uh, some adjustment, uh, we can make those uh, make those course corrections uh, before we uh, exceed those policies. Uh, next slide, please, Kathy. And uh, one, of the, uh, one of our additional and the last uh, financial policy that I'm going to talk about um, is that uh, the tax levy or the levy for debt service shall not exceed 25% of the total property tax levy. 
Uh, so the uh, blue line on this graph represents 25% of the property tax levy. The gold um, bars represent um, our existing debt service. These are funds that we have already borrowed and we are already obligated to pay. Um, the orange portion of those bars represents the new debt service. That is the debt service on the, on the debt that we will be issuing as part of this CIP. So as you can see, um, these, uh, you know, our, our, our debt curve going forward based on our existing debt, we start to pay off debt, so the, our debt service goes down. But that's also being replaced by our new, our new debt. And uh, throughout the course of this, uh, this capital plan, we do continue to comply with uh, this particular measure of our debt service. Although, as you can see, our debt service does continue uh, to increase uh, throughout the five years um, of this CIP. Next slide, please, Kathy. So again, just at a high level, um, the total non-transportation related projects in this 2021 through 2025 CIP that are funded by the general fund or funded through uh, the property tax dollars um, and our tax levy supported debt equals about $26.7 million. So those projects, um, non-transportation projects, total about 26. Uh, seven uh, million dollars. And then total non-transportation related projects funded by the general fund, fund balance, and tax levy supported debt that we deferred from this CIP. So these are projects that were submitted by departments for inclusion in the CIP, but we simply could not afford them uh, within it, uh, to be included in the CIP within our existing financial policies total $41.5 million. So as you can see, we received many, many more requests uh, for, uh, for uh, projects to be included in this CIP than we were able to fund. And in the um, six years that I've been here, this, uh, I guess the, the magnitude of this was, was greater than I've seen before, in fact, much greater. And that's why um, I felt an obligation to take a look out over the next five years as well and how we can then schedule some of these projects so that we are able to afford, afford them. So we have done that internally um, and believe that, uh, or I believe we've come up with a plan uh, to be able to do that by working with the department directors and um, scheduling those projects out in a manner that, that, that makes sense. However, it doesn't leave a lot of room uh, within the CIP, even over the course of the next 10 years, uh, to be funding other types of, of projects. And I think that this is important and, and part of um, you know, my obligation as a finance director and looking forward to making sure that, uh, that you know, we, we have this on our radar uh, so that we can plan accordingly and not uh, find ourselves in a position uh, where we have some sort of a financial issue uh, five, six years down the road and um, there are many, many more projects that need to be funded uh, than we're able to, able to afford. Uh, next slide, Kathy. So, um, is, as uh, City Council knows, we distributed the CIP electronically on May 21st. Uh, we were supposed to have our first work session on May 26th, um, and, but uh, now it's uh, June 9th and we're having that work session. The Plan Commission is scheduled to review uh, the CIP at their meeting on June 15th. Transit Commission is scheduled to review on June 17th, Waterways and Parks on June 24th, and then we've tentatively scheduled the public discussion on city council action uh, for July 13th and July 14th. Um, those dates are not etched in stone, um, particularly the 13th and the 14th. Um, and uh, you know, at this point, uh, Kathy, you want to flip to the next slide, please? Well, at this point, um, certainly be interested in hearing from 
uh, the city council on what process you all would like to take. Uh, I guess there isn't the next slide. Um, <laughs> what process you all would like to take um, in reviewing this CIP, because this is a somewhat unusual uh, year with our uh, inability to meet, uh, to meet in person. Um, certainly happy to go through projects with you. Um, certainly understand that uh, we probably don't want to do that uh, this evening, but certainly happy to go through projects uh, as we have in the past, um, or if there's some other process that the city council would like to take um, in, in reviewing the CIP, um, certainly willing to um, uh, and interested in hearing uh, that from you all. Um, since the CIP was prepared, um, the uh, tragic events that we've all witnessed uh, in Minneapolis and talked about this evening occurred, and um, there's been a, a good deal of community discussion, um, and we uh, heard some uh, from some members of the public last evening regarding uh, body cameras. Now, body cameras uh, or body-worn cameras were included um, in this uh, CIP uh, within the land buildings and equipment uh, portion of the CIP. Um, and they were uh, planned for implementation, the body-worn camera piece was planned for implementation in 2023. Um, it was actually a 2022 through 2023 project. The 2022 was planned for our in replacement of our in-squad video system. Uh, in discussions with the city manager, um, he has uh, indicated a, a, an interest and a willingness to move uh, that project forward or advance that project um, and uh, has uh, asked staff to begin the process of reviewing um, uh, the video systems for both uh, the in-squad video as well as the um, body-worn cameras to begin reviewing vendors uh, for that project. And if we can get that project uh, to a point um, where we think we can move it forward, uh, we're, we're looking at advancing that project um, a year uh, to be responsive to um, the, the requests of uh, community members. So with that, um, I would be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I don't want to delay the evening any longer than necessary, but in looking at that graph with the uh, tax-supported debt service uh, at 25%, maybe if you could pull that up, uh, this one, page, page five, that, that one. Uh, I see in 2025 our tax levy is going to go up. <laughs> uh, okay. What's going to happen in 2025, or are you just putting that wrinkle in the line so that uh, we stay at, uh, under 25 percent? No. Uh, what, what happens is when we calculate 25 percent of the property tax levy, the property tax levy includes that debt service. So that because our debt service is kind of uh, jumping a little bit between 2024 and 2025, you also see uh, that blue line uh, jump a little bit as well. So that's reflective of the additional uh, the additional debt service. May I have a follow up? Uh, you know, having been part of uh, putting the uh, policies together back several years with uh, Council Member Von Hayden, uh, I get. It appears that on some of these uh, limits that we've imposed or, or passed, that the uh, there's not a lot of uh, room. I mean, the room that we have under those guidelines is uh, shrinking a bit. Uh, my, I guess my question is, uh, What what is what has to go wrong in order to put a future council in a bad spot in terms of having to re relax those limits or to make some significant changes to those uh, debt 
and uh, tax levy limits? Well, I, I'm not sure, Councilmember Klinghammer, Klinghammer, exactly what you mean. What needs to go needs to go wrong, but um, I will say that when I looked out again at the five years beyond the um, horizon of this CIP, um, the replacement of our parking structures is going to be a significant driver of the CIP and potentially future debt service. And I think that that is going to need to be, how we pay for the replacement of those downtown parking structures is going to need to be um, a conversation that occurs probably over a number of years because in my opinion, I don't believe that within our existing financial policies, the general fund is going to be able to um, pay the entire burden of constructing uh, structured parking within the downtown. And that's already anticipating that tax incremental district number 11 uh, contributes $10 million um, to the construction of those parking facilities. So I think that, again, and that's why we need to start having these discussions and looking out ahead is um, I think we're going to need to have some serious discussions about um, about how we're going to finance those structures um, and alternatives to, to simply issuing uh, debt uh, to do that because uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to just issue debt and still be able to um, keep up with our ongoing uh, street maintenance um, and other uh, infrastructure program. So, again, that was really part of my reasoning in in extending the, the planning horizon uh, for for this CIP is to is to bring those discussions to the forefront, so we have a significant amount of time to be able to um, be able to prepare. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, President Weldon. Thank you, Mr. Winsens. Um, I guess my question is, is it kind of comes back to the table of contents in a way at the very beginning of the CIP, but um, I notice like things, some things are included one year and not another in terms of like broad categories, like different funds. So for example, there's there's um, only a couple kid districts that are that are uh, identified for projects. Um, so last, but also last year there was the library improvements um, fund 490 that was obviously a big subject last year, but it's not included at all this year. Does that essentially mean that we're not going to be spending any capital dollars on the library in the next five years, or, or what exactly does that mean? Well, good question. Uh, what it means is that not that we're not going to be spending any money on the library in the next five years, because certainly there is a large uh, project out there, um, but that was a 2020 project, and we intend to um, we, you know, the plan is uh, to borrow that money in 2020. Now, it may mean that we don't do that, but the city council nevertheless has already appropriated those dollars uh, for the library, so they don't need to be reappropriated um, as part of this CIP. Um, what it also means is that there are no additional um, capital projects on the five-year horizon for the library beyond um, the, um, the renovation and expansion that was already approved. So it's similar with the other, the other 10 districts is, is that um, you know, some of those districts have reached the end of their expenditure period. Some of those districts simply um, can't afford uh, to spend any additional 
uh, dollars, or there just aren't any other projects that were contemplated as part of the project plans for those districts. So we don't include a district or we don't include a fund um, if there aren't any projects that are contemplated uh, uh, to be uh, to be funded from that uh, source. I guess I have a follow-up to that, um, perhaps more of a request, I guess. Would it be possible to, to get a full list of all possible funds so that we could see which ones are not getting any funding? Um, yeah, we can absolutely give you a list of all our capital funds. That's that's not a problem. It's not a question about which aren't getting any funding. They're, you know, if they're not in there, no projects were submitted to be funded from those sources. Yeah, I guess it just kind of, it gives us a good, I feel like it just gives me a better picture of, of you know, all the, the different funds and, you know, what could pop up on future CIPs and, you know, because obviously the city council could also have a, you know, a thought to fund something that maybe we didn't even know there was a fund for, or I don't know, but just just a informational thing mostly. So thank you. Yep, not a problem. Uh, thank you. So I do, to kind of follow up uh, on your question about ongoing meetings, I do, you know, I went through the CIP and I have a few notes and questions, but I recognize that we've been at this for over four hours, so, and um, which is fine. Um, so, so I would like a chance to, to talk about that. Um, but then I also, so putting my vote for that, um, my support for, I don't know if that would be in our work session or what that would look like, but um, to, to answer some specific questions. And then also, um, we t you talked briefly about the body cameras, and I just had a clarifying question, hopefully for tonight. You know, tonight during our meeting, we got, and all afternoon, we got a flurry of emails, probably 20 or 30 of them, uh, asking us to defund the, um, the police department. Um, or I don't know what they're asking for exactly, but um, something along those lines. So I was wondering, this, the funds for the body cameras, would that be additional funds or would that be within the police department fund and reprioritization for the body cameras? I'll also just say one more thing that when um, I corresponded with Dr. Funk, I believe she said that she was looking more at reprioritization of funds rather than additional funds for the body camera. Um, so I'm just wondering if those would be new funds or just uh, different reprioritization of the funds within the police department for the body camera. Um, I, I, th I think the answer is, 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 is neither. Uh, if you go to, uh, I'm trying to get, if you go to, to fund 434, which is land building and equipment, it's on page 61, uh, starts on page 61 of the CIP. Um, there's a, a, a project about uh, two thirds of the way down. Um, it's project number 434-02, oh no, excuse me. 434-023, which is public safety video systems. And within this project, uh, $555,000 was planned in 2022 and 250,000 in 2023. So this, this is a $805,000 project that includes both the replacement of the in-squad and interview room video systems um, as well as the addition of body-worn cameras. And these, these you know, the, the reason the funding is split is we're not sure that we can get it all accomplished, very frankly, in, in, in one year because it ends up being a large project. But this, what I believe the city manager has suggested is that um, we begin the process of researching which uh, which vendor uh, we would choose because there are different uh, different vendors out there that have uh, uh, video systems. And if we can get that process far enough along um, that we would move the funding 
uh, the 2022 and 2023 funding, I believe all into 2021. Um, you know, that's really the soonest at this point. Um, you know, we're midway through 2020 um, that we would be able to, to uh, implement uh, the replacement of the in-squad video um, as well as the implementation of the body-worn cameras. So it's, um, you know, it's not additional funding. Uh, it's not even reprioritization of funding. Um, it's really just moving uh, the funding that we've already got in the CIP uh, forward um, by really by one year. Okay, that makes sense. And I do remember reading that in the CIP. So, yeah, just moving it up. The third option, got it. That's right. Yeah, thank you, President Weld. Um, yeah, looking at this calendar, I mean, I think it would be helpful to have another work session sometime before um, council action. And, um, you know, I know we, uh, with our operating budget, we decided to have a hearing, you know, two weeks before or something like that. We, we actually voted. I'm not sure if we really have time for that this year, but maybe we do. Um, but I feel like the operating budget is just as important as the CIP, so maybe we want to consider doing that. Um, I have a feeling, you know, we would there would be interest in that in the community, at least from from certain folks, um, but. Uh, but I guess on a baseline level, I'd be interested in a, you know, a work session for us to, to maybe hash through some of the comments that we get from Plan Commission, Transit Commission, and Waterways and Parks Commission reviews before we, um, I guess, yeah, that, that would be what I would be interested in. Thanks, Terry. Uh, I would be uh, in support of what um, Jeremy just laid out as far as, you know, us coming together again, perhaps um, again to kind of work through the details and then um, coming up for action. Um, I think a plan B that I would ask for is maybe a, um, a recorded overview of the CIP presentation and then council members could check it out at their leisure um, and then citizens could look at it too. I know that you're going to be giving this presentation um, probably like six times, maybe more. <laughs> um, so I'm sensitive to that. But just given our truncated uh, meeting schedule, that could even be a nice alternative um, for council to get a presentation in that way. Um, the other uh, question that I have is, uh, and maybe you would have this in a longer presentation, is really discussion around refinancing our debt um, and if there's any other, I guess, debt strategies that we might consider with the CIP for um, just trying to maximize uh, low interest rates. And yeah, so just eager to learn about that. Okay, that sounds good. I mean, what I'm, what I'm hearing is certainly a desire um, to uh, to have a work session. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at calendars um, for um, after the uh, other boards and commissions have reviewed um, at least their, uh, their portions of the CIP and we'll, we'll try to get something scheduled. Um, as far as refunding or refinancing goes, um, Council Member Manuel, that's something that we take a look at with our financial advisor every single year. and. Um, and where, the, where there are opportunities for um, savings, um, we go ahead and, and refund that debt. And uh, if you go back um, through um, the last several years' debt issues, you can um, often see in the presentations where I'm talking about uh, refunding um, certain debt issues and how much the, the savings are from those issues. So that's absolutely something we take a look at. Um, every every single year, um, um, but we're we're getting to a point where um, 
many of the debt issues that are eligible for refunding um, were already issued at fairly low interest rates. But I do think that there'll be a few issues um, this year uh, where refunding will make sense um, and uh, uh, the taxpayers of Eau Claire will, will be able to realize um, some, uh, some substantial uh, interest savings uh, as a result of those refundings. Um, one of the differences between municipal debt, uh, the bonds and the promissory notes that we issue and um, a home mortgage or an auto loan that you might go out and get is that we can only refund or refinance that debt um, during certain periods. So when we issue a promissory note, which is uh, basically um, debt issued over 10 years, uh, normally we can only refund that in the last year or two um, of that debt issue. Um, similarly, with the bonds that we issue, which are 20-year bonds, um, oftentimes those can only be uh, refunded um, maybe within the last five years or so. So each one of those instruments describes uh, when it can be refunded. So we are, you know, we are somewhat restricted on, on when we can go ahead um, and, and refund or refinance that debt. But uh, do rest assured that we take a look at that every single year. Thank you, uh, President Weld. Um, Mr. Winsens, I know the there's that kind of 10-year window is discussed a bit in the first couple pages of the, the CIP. Um, I guess the, the Hobbs improvements and the Hobbs uh, facility expansion, I guess I'm wondering if those are and given the long time frame before those would be implemented, they have about five, six, seven years or something. Is is there like a strategy for private fundraising that accompanies that and, and working? I'm assuming there's a lot of work with the partners that, you know, have the needs for that expansion or for the the improvements to the facility. But um, do you have a picture of what that, that's looking like right now? And, and are the numbers that we're seeing what the city is essentially expecting um, to to have to pay for, as opposed to maybe there's additional funds that are um, being fundraised that, that you would be aware of already. Um, I believe that the the project requests um, do not include um, fundraising from private entities, but with that being said. Well, that's one of the reasons to start these discussions is is so that um, is so that we can get some direction from the city council maybe on some of these projects. And so, you know, again, using the Hobbs Ice Arena as an example, that you know that these projects, you know, that project um, council might say we need to you know fund. 25% uh, of that through, through private fundraising from the um, from the uh, users of the facility, uh, if we're going to proceed forward with that, um, you know that's certainly a funding a funding strategy. But and again, part of the reason for look, looking out forward and bringing these to the intention of the city council is so that we can have those discussions. And if we need to do that fundraising, um, then um, you know they we're putting those. Uh, groups on notice and staff can start planning accordingly. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any other discussion? I don't see any. I think uh, we're good to go for now, and uh, Mr. Lindsay's and staff will get back to us. Calendar options. Yeah, absolutely. We will uh, take a look at calendars and uh, and try to get uh, a work session scheduled. Um, you know, sometime um, you know after uh, probably June 24th, which is when Waterways and Parks is scheduled to review uh, the CIP. And if we need to push 
uh, the July 13th and 14th dates back a little bit uh, to accommodate that, uh, um, that shouldn't be a problem. Thank you. You too. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire.